Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you to your seventh semester. I hope you are doing fine during COVID-19. The title of this course is Linear Control Systems and I am Muhammad Abid. In today's lecture, we shall talk about the importance of control systems and their applications in various fields. Furthermore, we shall describe some basic terminologies. We have two types of control, manual control and automatic control. The figure on this slide shows a manual control, where a person is controlling the level of liquid in a cylindrical tank. There is an inflow of fluid into the tank and the person manually changes the position of the valve to control fluid flowing out of the cylinder. This type of control is called a manual control. In comparison to that, in an automatic control system, the variable of interest is controlled automatically without involvement of a human being. This is done by using, for example, some kind of electronic circuitry or by writing some instructions in a digital processor or by using some simple mechanical arrangement. Automatic control has several advantages over the manual control which are described on the next slide. One advantage of automatic control is that it is less costly. This is because in an automatic control you deploy some electronic or mechanical circuitry so you have not to pay for the additional labor cost. Therefore, automatic control is less costly. The second advantage is reliability. Human beings can get tired, they have other needs, human error is also there. All these factors are not there to that extent in an automatic control. Therefore, automatic control is more reliable. Third advantage is accuracy. Automatic control is more accurate because the sensors utilized in automatic control can give more accurate readings. Consider for example the liquid level control system in the last slide. A human eye can measure the level of a liquid with an accuracy of at most in millimeters. However, if you use other sensors, the accuracy can be significantly improved. Therefore, automatic control is more accurate. Another advantage of automatic control is that some places and environments may not be accessible to human beings. For example, inside a nuclear reactor, you have a high level of radiation uh, and you cannot deploy a person over there. Likewise, in a furnace, you have a very high temperature. Similarly, if you are sending some space mission, you may not be able to deploy a human beings over there. Other advantages of automatic control include waste minimization and larger production. Before we go into more details of automatic control, let's first talk about some historical background of automatic control and, and some applications uh, of control systems. Figure on this slide shows a simple arrangement to automatically control the level of a liquid inside a tank. There is an inflow of water from the inlet and water leaves the cylinder in the form of steam from the cylinder. To control the liquid level, there is an arrangement of a float, a lever and a valve. When water level drops below the desired level, float drops and the valve connected to the float through a lever is opened to allow more inflow of water into the tank. As the level reaches the desired point, the valve is closed to stop more inflow of water. Have you seen any such arrangement of water level control in your daily life? Yes, in your washrooms. Now, just imagine the situation that you had to deploy a person to control the water level inside the water tank in your washroom. So some places are really inaccessible for human beings. An interesting application of liquid level control systems described on the previous slide is a water clock as depicted on 
in the figure on this slide. If the level of the liquid in the middle tank is maintained constant, the outflow from the orifice will be constant, which will result into constant rate of rise in liquid level of the bottom tank, which can then be calibrated in terms of time. Water clock is one of the oldest examples of automatic control. Water clocks existed even before 1600 BC. Another simple example of automatic control is the Watts flywheel. With the advent of industrial revolution, flywheels have been most commonly used to control various industrial processes. The concept is very simple. Two heavy balls are connected to a rotating shaft as shown in the figure. As the speed of the shaft increases, the balls move away from the central shaft due to the centripetal force. And as speed reduces, the balls move towards the center. These balls are then connected to some valve through a lever which can be utilized to control inflow of some fluid. This is further explained on the next slide. Here on this slide, a Watts flywheel is utilized to control the speed of a rotating wheel. The wheel is connected through an arrangement of flywheel governors. As the speed of wheel increases, flywheel fly balls move away from the central shaft. These balls are connected to a valve through an arrangement of liver and reduce the opening in the valve thereby reducing the inflow of steam into the steam engine and therefore the speed of the wheel reduces. In case the speed of wheel drops below the desired level, the opposite situation occurs allowing more steam into the engine thereby increasing the speed of wheel to bring it to the desired level. Control systems find many applications in modern industrial processes. You can hardly imagine a modern industry without application of automatic control. Just to name a few, next few slides present applications of automatic control in various fields. Control finds its applications in electronics industry. An example is shown in figure on this slide. You know to manufacture electronic components and ICs, you need to precisely control the position of a wafer. So, control objective is to control the position of the wafer. Similarly, you know that in PCB etching using CNC machines, precisely controlling the position of header is very important. In unmanned air vehicles, there are many applications of control systems. You have to control the position of vehicle by controlling its wings and thrust. The objective of this slide is not to get into detailed understanding of these applications. Rather, I want to motivate you that control finds its applications in modern, modern industrial processes. In wind turbines control finds its application. What is the control objective in wind turbines? Among others, one objective is to control the orienta orientation of blades of wind turbine to optimally capture wind energy without mechanically damaging the turbine. In many industries, you need to control various uh, variables for example you need to control the temperature you need to control pressure you need to control liquid levels you need to control speeds of conveyor belts and so on in computer industry there are applications of control system figure shows a hard disk that is there in your computers to fetch data from a particular location you need to precisely point the head so the control objective is to control the position of the head. Again, I do not intend to explain the working of the, all these applications in these slides. Rather, I want to motivate you that control has many applications. In automobile industry, control finds 
its applications. There are many control systems in a modern vehicle. The car shown in figure on these slides has an adjustable wing. Its position can be controlled to apply brakes and to adjust road grip of the car. Another interesting control system in automobiles is suspension control. Conventional suspension systems in vehicles consists of springs and dampers and their parameters are adjusted to make a trade-off between control level of uh, comfort level of passengers and road grip. In modern cars, they design active suspension system which enhances the comfort level to a great extent. Uh, here on the next slide, there is a video which gives a comparison of active suspension system and conventional suspension system. You have two uh, suspension system. The bottom one is conventional suspension system and upper one is the active suspension system. You can see the difference. The performance on bump. This is conventional suspension. And here is an active suspension system. I have downloaded these, this video from YouTube. Mais gardons le meilleur pour la fin. Vous avez bien vu, la voiture a sauté l'obstacle. C'est une prouesse technique pour la forme. Une station qui ferait pourtant fureur sur les parkings le samedi soir, mais avouez que c'est bluffant. J'espère que comme nous, vous avez apprécié. So. Control also finds its application in medical industry. The figure on this slide shows an equipment used for surgery. This equipment helps a surgeon to take uh, to place the needle at the desired position and furthermore to reduce the transfer of vibration in his hands to the point to be operated. Here is uh, another application, interesting application of control in biomedical systems. Artificial pancreas is designed for diabetic patients. There is a sensor which measures the glucose level in human body and then a control algorithm decides the amount of insulin to be injected in the body to maintain glucose concentration at a desired level. In space explorations, control finds its applications. Figure shows a very big antenna placed to capture signals coming from the space. What is the control objective in this application? The control objective is to optimally control the orientation of the antenna. You all have heard about bullet trains. These trains are levitated in air to minimize friction thereby enabling the train to travel at a very high speed. One of the control objectives is to maintain 
the distance of train from the rail despite variations in load on the train. In robotics, control has many applications. For example, in the humanoid robot, robot shown on this slide, one of control objectives is to erect it in upright position. The robotic hand shown in figure can grip different objects and one of the control objectives is to apply a controlled force on the object to be picked up. The last figure on this slide shows a zoomed view of miniature robot. Uh, you may be quite tired now so I have another brief video on the next slide. It is again downloaded from you. So it is not working right now. Maybe. Oh. So here the control objective is to balance the bicycle and furthermore another control objective is to track the path over here. So control finds its application in robotics as well. Control uh, system not only applies to physical systems, ra rather it has also applications in other systems, for example, in economic systems, in social systems, etc. In next part of uh, this uh, lecture, we shall discuss some terminologies and some basic control concepts.